Hey guys, in this episode we're going to decorate our landscape using UE5 foliage tools. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and today we are painting foliage on our landscape. So in the last few episodes, we began setting up our initial level, this construct garden that I have in mind. And for this episode, we're really just going to be painting in one quadrant of that level. But you're going to need a bunch of assets for this episode, and I've included a link to a spreadsheet in the description below. Everything's free. It's all from Quixel Bridge. I'm going to go over quickly how to just bring this into your level. And then we're going to go over how to set up these foliage assets to be able to paint. We're going to cover some of the key details, the features, the settings that are important for foliage. So for example, the rotation of the asset how much it would be embedded on the ground, on what slope should it be permitted to be painted on, stuff like that. And then we're going to paint using foliage mode. We'll go through my process that I use trial and error to figure out the best settings. And then the last thing we'll do is I'll go through how to turn on foliage wind for our plant assets, kind of give that ambient realism that we want in our game. So here are the key concepts for our episode today. Instanced hierarchical static meshes are what's used by the foliage editor tool for painting a single asset multiple times, sometimes hundreds if not thousands of times across the landscape with a minimum impact to the performance of our game. And that's going to tie into our next episode, which is really performance centric, but we're going to start on it this episode a bit. We're going to talk about FPS frames per second, which you're probably already familiar with if you're a gamer, and how to keep that as high as possible without sacrificing the quality of our game. So last episode, we set up the ability for our 3D assets like this rock here to be able to blend seamlessly with our ground. And for this episode, you're going to need a whole bunch of these assets. And I put together a complete list of every single asset that we're using for free in this episode. And you can find them in the spreadsheet below. And from that spreadsheet, you'll be able to take the codes for each. And you could just go into Quixel Bridge like we have in the past couple of episodes. And you could literally just copy and paste those codes into here and then download them directly. And just a quick note here, when you download the truly static meshes, so rocks, walls, you know, st structures that aren't going to change in any way, make sure to download those at nanite quality. But for plant foliage, for things that are going to have to move in the wind, make sure you download those at high quality. And I just want to quickly go over the folder structure of how to sort the assets once you've downloaded them. So if you navigate to your content folder, you can go into your mega scans. So Megascans is divided into 3D assets and 3D plants that we're downloading this episode. If I go into either one of these, 3D assets or 3D plants, what I've done is I've divided these into our lakes, rivers, and paths, which is what's separating our quadrants. And then we've got our air quadrant, earth quadrant, fire quadrant, water quadrant. And each one of those are assets that correspond to each of the four parts of our garden. And within a quadrant, it's just very simple. We've got our main palette, so what assets are we using that are primarily making up the quadrant? What are the unique and symbolic, really the artistic elements of that quadrant? We're going to start talking about that next episode. And then we have the water edge here. So you're going to see that we're going to use a different foliage type on the edges of our quadrants. And there's a specific reason for that that we're going to get to. So what I recommend is when you download these assets in batches, just select all of them by holding Control or Shift and then click and drag and drop them into one of these folders. And when you do that, it's going to take a little while for them to load in. But if you do it in batches, then it goes much faster. And for this episode, we'll be focused on assets for our Earth Quadrant, and specifically those in the main palette folder, both for 3D plants and for 3D assets. So if you don't want to have to download all these assets to follow along with this episode, just those two folders will be sufficient. The last thing I'll say is for each of these assets, the rocks that you bring in, so under 3D Assets, Earth Quadrant, Main Palette, you'll need to enable collision on all of these assets in order to get them functioning properly in what we're going to do today. So if you double click in each of the static meshes, I'll just show you how to do this once. And we did this last episode as well. If you scroll all the way down on the right hand side to collision complexity, because we want our character to be able to jump around on these rocks and be able to get really close, we want the collision to be an accurate reflection of that object object's geometry. So if we select for collision complexity, use complex as simple, that'll enable that collision that's really the geometry of that object. Now, before we start using these rocks as foliage for our landscape, the first thing I really like to do is I like to inspect each of the assets that we're bringing in. And the main reason for that is to just get a sense of the size of each of those assets in relation to each other. Also the quality, but I've already done that ahead of time. So we can just select our first asset, drag it into the world, and I'm just going to do this for each one. 
And when I drag all those into our scene, I'm just going to hit play so I could see that up close. And right away, I am starting to see an issue. So our main boulder here, our original boulder from last episode, doesn't load properly. And in the top left corner of my screen, if you could see there in red text, I see this texture streaming pool over 1.325 gigabyte budget. So what's going on here? So basically, Unreal Engine is running out of what's called texture memory when we're bringing all these assets into our world. But luckily, there's a very easy way to fix this. So if we minimize Unreal Engine, and if you navigate to your projects folder, it's probably under documents and then Unreal projects. But if you navigate into that folder and then into the config folder, and if you go into your default engine.ini document here, so in this paragraph that has script engine renderer settings, we need to add a line underneath this. And the line we need to add is this r.streaming.poolsize equals. And you could expand this to, you know, I'm making it about 8 gigabytes. So this is then going to use 8 gigabytes of RAM for that streaming pool, roughly expanding it eightfold. And I haven't had any problems with that, so that should be enough. So we're going to go ahead and file, save this document, close that. And then you're just going to need to restart the engine. So getting a sense of all of these assets, the size and scale of all these rocks, we're going to end up painting them across our Earth Quadrant here on the right-hand side. But before we do that, I want to go back to what we set out to build about three episodes ago, which was an initial construct level. This level where we can bring in just about anything and we can load just about anything, but it really is representative. It's like a microcosm of our overall game. And for our construct, I'm envisioning a garden, and I had the idea to make it in basically the shape of an octagon. Not the octagon, uh, but we will be, you know, experimenting with combat and things like that in the garden. So I suppose it could function in that regard. So we're going to set up the boundaries of our garden right now before we start painting. Because it's not going to be the full extent of this landscape. And I just want to show you how I'm going to properly measure this out. And this way I don't have to paint in anything that's not actually going to be used. So what we're going to do, I'm going to come down to our center here. And if I come down to quickly add to the project, and we're going to select shapes and a cube, and that's going to be automatically added to our project here. I'm going to put this cube in the very, very center of our map to the best extent I'm able to find the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the boundaries of this cube. So I'm going to make it uh, be about 250 times as long. And that's what I've measured out the boundaries of our garden to be. So based on that, I'm setting up the frame, like temporary walls around our garden, that's going to give the extent to which we need to add this foliage to our landscape. So let me just set this up really quickly. So at the edges of each of these, if we bring in another shape, I'm going to bring in a cube here. And I'm just going to reposition that to be right at the boundaries. And I'm going to do this for the four edges. But then we're going to switch it and make it diagonal so that we have an octagon. And we're going to set the edge cubes to be 250 by 25. And then I'm going to flip them 90 degrees. So rotation 90 degrees. And I'm going to move this out to be right at the edge there. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, but that's close enough. And then what we can do is we can select it, Control C to copy, Control V paste. And I'm just going to move it over to the other side. And let me speed up my camera so I can just fly over there very quickly. Move it all the way to that edge. We'll do the same sort of thing. And now I'm just going to rotate our ruler here, our little measuring stick. And I can rotate that 90 degrees. And we're going to do the same kind of thing. And if it's not 100% aligned in the corners, that's totally fine. Because keep in mind, we're going to have a octagon shape. So our corners are going to be edges too. So now we're going to take our ruler. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees. So now we're going to do the corners. We're going to do the same kind of thing. Control C copy, Control V paste. And we'll rotate this one 45 degrees, or actually 135, because we got to add 45 to our 90. All right, so now we got roughly the boundaries of our garden here. I'm going to get rid of our ruler, delete that. And I can hold control and select every single one of our walls here, our temporary. This is basically a frame for painting, if you really think of it that way. Uh, so I selected every single one. I'm just going to change the scale to be like, yeah, 25 high. So now they're actually walls. And we've got the bounds of our garden. All right, so now let's talk about the foliage system in Unreal Engine and what makes the foliage system so remarkable. So the foliage system uses something called instanced hierarchical static meshes, which is just a really fancy way of saying we're taking a static mesh 
and then we're replicating that hundreds if not thousands of times across the landscape and doing it in such a way that's going to minimize the performance impact on our game. And the way it does that is it's really just rendering one object, like one piece of geometry. Now, there's still a performance impact in terms of the light and the shadow because depending on where that object is, it still needs to be rendered differently with the light and shadow. But the actual geometry of the mesh, it treats all of those, the hundreds of things, really as one actor, as one entity. And the downside to that, though, is that we can't pick an individual rock from that collection of rocks and say, like, oh, let's just change this one because they're all being treated as one for the purpose of rendering. But in terms of scalability, it makes it really easy, really nice to have hundreds, if not thousands of those. And so let's go over how to make those foliage assets. So to do that, I came into our Earth Quadrant main palette folder here, and then I'm going to right click. And if you go to foliage, so we have three types of foliage here. And I'll just talk about these three types briefly. So the, the bottom two, landscape, grass type, static mesh foliage, those are exactly what I mentioned. They're instant static meshes. So the performance of that is very good. The top one called actor foliage, so that one's unique because that's going to actually, when it paints, treat every individual entity as an individual entity. So then you can modify individual actors in the world. So there's no performance improvement to doing that. Yeah, it says the cost of painting this foliage is the same as adding actors in the scene. The only benefit there is that you could put a ton of those actors in the scene very quickly. So instead of having to drag and drag and drag and drag, it's just paint and you got them all in there. But the actual painting works exactly the same to what we're going to do today. But today we're going to be focused on static mesh foliage here. So I'll go ahead and select that for our first one. And I'm going to rename this Earth Rock 1. And then I can double click to go into it. And when you go into it, you're brought to the foliage editor with a lot of different foliage settings. And we'll go through these. So the first thing is, let's select our mesh. So if you search for Nordic, I'm just going to choose this Nordic Beach Boulder, the very first one. And let's just go through some of the key settings here. Not all of them, but the stuff that's important. So the Z offset. So let me minimize this just to show you what I'm referring to with this. So if you take a look at this asset, right? So if we place it right on the edge of the ground on the right hand side, it could still be above the ground on the left hand side. Some of these assets, we really want to make sure that they're not just resting on top of the ground, but we really want to embed them in the ground. And in general, for these big rocks, these boulders, I think it's a safe practice to do that. So that's really what that Z offset is. It's like, how much do we want to embed that asset into the ground? So in general, for these rocks, I'm going to set a minimum of about negative 40 and a maximum of negative 20 because we always want them to be below that landscape level. This align max angle and the random pitch angle. So the question is, you know, how much do we want to allow that rock to vary compared to the angle of the landscape? So if the landscape's like this, we always want to align that rock perfectly up against the landscape, or do we want to allow it to be a little bit tilted off center? And in general, I tend to give this about a three degree allowance for both of these settings. For the random yaw, typically we want to keep that checked because that's what allows the rock to be rotated around the z-axis. So it allows it to be facing in any direction. The ground slope angle. This isn't important yet, but for our foliage, especially when we paint the outer edges of our quadrant with a specific foliage type, that's going to be important. So this is the maximum angle that we will want to allow painting of our foliage to take place on. So for example, let's say we have a cliff face and it's like almost vertical. You wouldn't want to place a rock on the side of that cliff because because realistically, gravity would pull it down. But in this case, it's set to 45 degrees, which is about this kind of angle. And I think that's okay for now. But for our edges of the rivers, that's going to have a pretty steep angle. So we need to make sure to change that when we get to that foliage type. Mobility is going to be static. Casting shadow, all of that's good. I think the only other setting we really need to change here is the collision. Let's make sure to set that to block all. Because we want our player, our character, to be able to jump and run on those rocks. So I'll set that to block all. But keep in mind, you still need to set that in each individual static mesh. And then I'll save that. And so now let's actually test painting that on the landscape. And for the last couple of episodes, we've been either a select or landscape. And so we're just moving down the list. So now we're going on to foliage mode if you select that. And instantly when you do that, you might see a whole bunch of foliage assets here if you've already downloaded the assets for our water quadrant. And that's because whenever you download plant foliage, it automatically comes with a foliage asset already. It's just the rocks for which we have to create these manually. But what I want you to do is just clear all these out. So select the top left one, come down, come down, come down all the way to the bottom right and just delete to clear them out. Going to have a completely blank palette from which we can paint. But now if you come back to your content drawer 
select your earth rock, drag it in there, and we'll select that. And once you check it, you'll be able to actually paint. But before we paint, let me go over just a few settings here. So the first ones are our brush options. We have our brush size, we have our paint density. These are very similar to what we used in our landscape editor in the sculpting tool. And then we have the filters here. And this is particularly important because really the question is, what are we painting this asset on? So in our case, we're specifically painting it on landscape. But for example, in Unreal Engine Early Access, they released a world with no landscape and it was just static meshes on static meshes. So if you want to paint rocks or anything on those static meshes then you would need to check the static meshes here but this is a nice easy way to prevent overlap like if you don't want rocks to be painted on top of each other you would just unselect static meshes there so i'm going to make sure our filters are just set to landscape here and then down here in the bottom left hand corner so we have our paint density so this is basically the amount of rocks the amount of our foliage asset that's in a 1000 by 1000 unit area which is roughly 10 meters by 10 meters so it's roughly the size of my brush here because that's set to 1000 as well so if i go like this click i've got roughly 100 rocks there now we've got 158 so it's a little bit more now the radius, I don't typically use this, but this specifies the minimum distance between each individual asset. The reason I don't typically use it is because the density setting usually takes care of that. It's only if I deliberately wanna space things out a certain distance away from each other that I would use that. Scaling, this is important. So typically I set this to uniform. If I have only a few assets in a particular area and I wanna give the illusion of having many different assets, so let's say I only have like three types of rocks but I wanna make them all look different. So in that case, I might set it to free and that way each of the axes, like the X and the Y and the, no, the X and the Y and the Z axis could all vary independently. Kind of gives the illusion that you have more assets in the scene than you actually do because they're each size differently. But sometimes it makes the, the assets look kind of weird. So typically I set this, especially if I have a lot of assets like I do for the rocks here, I set it to uniform. And then, but I do vary the total scale. So some rocks are smaller, some are larger. So it still gives it some variation. So for example, we might do something like 0 0.8 to 1.5. And then if I paint, you'll see some that are like pretty small and some that are a lot larger. And because we have the align to normal checked, those are all aligned into our landscape. And because we have a random yaw check, then those are all kind of rotated at a different angle. So the erase density is related to the paint density. So what I mean by that is if I set the erase density as 0 0.25 and I got to make sure to select erase because this is half what the paint density is, it's going to remove roughly half these rocks if I erase now. And I could set it to an even lower level like 0 0.1 and it'll erase even more. I could set it to a lower level and it'll erase even more. And you can kind of play with this to get a sense of, well, how many assets do you actually want in the scene? So you can always paint too many and then use the erase feature to kind of cull back. And if you set that to zero, then erasing will get rid of everything. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to select mode. I'm gonna go into the content drawer and we're just gonna duplicate our foliage asset 12 times here, I guess 11 times, so that we have 12 rock foliage assets. And the fastest way I found to do this is just right click, duplicate, and just keep on going down the list. And then once you've duplicated the 12, you can go into the second one and we could just switch it to our next save we'll keep going right on down and to make this go faster what you could do is you could right click on the folder say show a new content browser that'll speed this up a bit and luckily we're not going to have to do this for the actual plant foliage because those assets that we download from megascans they automatically come with foliage assets here but just for our rocks we have to do this now when you hit earth rock 7 here you're going to need to change out your mesh a little bit so if you search for tundra is it tundra Pretty sure it's Tundra. All right, so now that we got our 12 foliage assets, I'm gonna go back into foliage mode, go to our content drawer and I can click, drag, bring them all in. And now I can select all of these. But remember, before I actually paint these, let's look at our meshes over here. So not all of them are the same size, right? So some of these I wanna scale down a little bit and others I wanna scale up. And luckily all these are of nanite quality. So even if we make them a little bit bigger, they're still gonna appear pretty high fidelity. So these three right here, if I select those three, I'm gonna just set those. So those are kind of those three right there. I'm gonna set them just 0 0.8 to 1.2. I think they're a good size, generally speaking. Our little one here, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So it's gonna be 1.3 to 1.8. And then this one's our massive one, Earth Rock 2. 
that's gonna be 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. And in these, they're all smaller. I can make them, let's say 1.2 to 1.8. So roughly one and a half times the size. All right, so now we're just about ready to start painting. But before we start painting, I want to talk about performance a little bit, and I want to talk about the most important performance metric in our game. And that's the benchmark called frames per second or FPS. Usually games, what they're really struggling to do as they're developing a game is hit a certain FPS benchmark. So they'll say, we have to, we have, to have 45 frames per second or 45 FPS. And the reason is that if FPS drops below a certain threshold, then the player actually visibly recognizes when the game stalls or when it suffers a little bit. I've seen really good games where sometimes that happens. So for example, I remember the original StarCraft, and I'm really dating myself here, but the original StarCraft, you had these giant carriers where you had like hundreds of these little fighters flying around. And at times, even though I had a decent PC at the time, the fighters would go, eh, 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 and you knew immediately that that was a performance issue. Most games, they at least try to target 30 FPS, uh, but usually if there's a lot of fast action, they try to get at least 45 or 60. And so really that's what we're trying to do here. We're gonna try to keep above 60 whenever possible, but really 45 is our bare minimum. And the reason we're covering this now is because for the first time we're doing something in our level that's gonna seriously impact our frames per second. So let me first show you how you can track your frames per second and we'll go from there. So if you come up to the top left corner of your viewport and select show FPS, and you'll see that right in the top right. And right now I'm at 120 because it's really not much going on in the game. But as we begin painting stuff, especially our plant foliage, which doesn't use nanite, you're really gonna start to see that FPS begin to drop. All right, so now we're ready to paint. So make sure you're in paint mode, make sure you've got all your assets selected, all of them checked off, all of your settings look good. And brush size, we'll keep that to about 1,000. But the paint density, so that's going to be important because 0 0.5 here, it's going to be crazy dense. I'll just show you that. So if I start painting and you see it actually kind of freeze up for a moment there, it takes a little while to load the shaders. Yeah, it's just crazy, crazy dense. So I can actually decrease that considerably. Let's go down to 0 0.00. Let's try 2. No, let's try even less. Let's try 0 0.01 and see what that looks like. Yeah, so that's pretty good, right? Might want it a little bit more dense than that, but that's already looking pretty decent. So I'm gonna, just gonna do Control Z. And usually when I'm painting, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'll tweak one setting, paint a little bit, Control Z, change a different setting, paint a little bit, Control Z, and we just go from there until I get the settings looking exactly right. All right, so here we go. And now I can increase my brush size and paint the interior. And for this, I actually have to increase the paint density a proportionate amount. So I'll increase it to 0 0.06 to match that increase in brush size. And so now let me go back to select mode and let's actually play and see what this looks like and take a look at my FPS there. So yeah, so now we're looking at about 95 to 100. Yeah, it's still a decent FPS, but yeah. And that's really because we're looking at completely static assets here. And that's the benefit of those instant hierarchical static meshes. So this is looking pretty good. It's looking a little bit too dense. And also I do think that these really big rocks are still a little bit too big in proportion to the others. So I'm gonna try to increase the size of some of the other rocks and I'm gonna decrease the boulder size. And we're gonna do this one more time. Very easy to erase everything. And now, so we're gonna go to our biggest asset, this Earth Rock 2. I'm going to change the scale to be a little bit smaller here. Let's do 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. And I'm also going to increase the size of some of these other assets. So let's do like 1.5 to 2. And now let's change our brush size to 1000. Paint density again is 0 0.02. And make sure we're in paint mode and we'll give this another whirl. And we'll go ahead and play one more time. Starting to look pretty good. So the boulders are kind of a generalized shape and structure. I can't really tell whether one is bigger than another. Some do look repeating, but there's enough variation across the landscape. The only problem here is, I would say it's a little too dense, right? So let's thin it out a bit. So if I go back to foliage mode, and I set our erase density to something like 0 0.04. Whoop, got to switch to erase mode. I can actually see the numbers of our assets below decrease. So right now it's about 600 to 700. So let's try thinning this out a little bit more, 0 
0 0.02, 0 0.01. So you see me just kind of playing with these settings until I get it to a good level. And I'm starting to really like the way this looks because the only issue I'm seeing here is that some of the assets just aren't close enough to the ground in all places. So maybe we could raise up our ground a little bit, but in general, it's looking pretty good because we do have some parts of our landscape showing, and that's what we need to actually paint our plant foliage on our landscape. And so our FPS is still holding up pretty well, right? We're still looking at a 90 to 100 FPS, but as we get into the real foliage now, you're gonna see this number drop. So we gotta start really taking a look at it. So the next thing we're gonna do is begin painting our Nordic coastal ground cover. So if you go to our mega scans folder and then 3D plants under the earth quadrant and main palette, I found this really great set of ground cover for what I think this earth quadrant should look like. So if you go in that Nordic coastal ground cover folder, you have all these different static meshes for the foliage, but you can go directly to our foliage folder that it already comes with. And then from here, you can select the top one, come down, select the bottom one. And if you go into our foliage mode, we can then drag those all in the same way we did for our rocks. And so now I'm gonna unselect each of the rocks. So I can select the top one, hold shift, select the bottom one, uncheck, and we're gonna select all of our foliage here check those off and i just want to go over a few unique settings for our foliage here so we're going to skip down to scaling here uniform let's make this maybe like 0.9 to 1.1 so because there are so many assets in this foliage pack i don't think we need to vary them all that much and they look pretty good as is but also if you come down under placement and under advanced there's a really important setting here for plant foliage this collision with world and the reason that that's so important, especially if we have static meshes like these rocks here, is that unless we select this collision with world, it's not gonna check whether or not there's a rock whenever we place that foliage. So even if we have landscape checked here, we don't want to have the foliage paint over a place where a rock is already there. I mean, I suppose sometimes foliage could grow right out of a rock, but in general, that's not something we want to have happen. So make sure that that's checked, collision with world, but specifically do that for plant-based foliage. So now, because there are so many assets in this pack, we can keep our paint density pretty low here. I can navigate over to paint, and then let's give it a go. And right away, we see our numbers start to increase there. And because our numbers are still pretty low here, I'm gonna up our density. I'm gonna up it to something like 0 0.002. And now we see those numbers start to increase. And I'm also gonna watch my frame rate in the top right. I'm gonna increase my brush size to about 3000. And we see our frame rate really start to drop there. It's not dropping because of the foliage per se, but it is dropping because we're trying to paint a large area and it's having to do a collision check with all those rocks every time it paints. Because if there's a rock there, we don't want foliage sticking out of the ground. All right, so now our numbers are in the 300s and let's hit play and let's see what that's starting to look like. And that's looking pretty good, right? Pretty high density and our frame rate still pretty good, pretty 80 or 90. Now, if we don't have a lot of rocks in this area and our foliage is all over the landscape, our frame rate's gonna be dropping a lot more. But the other thing is that there's still a lot of open space here. I kinda wanna increase the intensity of that foliage. So let's go back and let's increase that. And then when I increase my brush size to 3000, I also gotta increase this by three because it's doing a ton of collision checks as I do that. And when the performance starts stabilizing, then you know that the painting is pretty much saturated at that point. And also if the stuttering is too great here, you could decrease your brush size to a smaller brush size and just paint at that smaller size. All right, we're looking at about 1.3 thousand for each of our foliage assets and we have roughly 40 foliage assets. So we have roughly 50,000 foliage meshes in the scene. Let's go take a look at our performance there. So now this is looking pretty good and we can zoom all the way in. I'm gonna hit F11 to get a full screen view. Kind of walk into our meadow here. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot. And our frame rate's still pretty decent. The only thing that doesn't look right is that they're not moving at all. So realistically, in this kind of meadow, we'd have at least some kind of breeze, right? 
So that's the last thing that we're gonna do this episode. We're gonna turn on our foliage wind. So if you navigate back over to your content drawer and go back into your Nordic Coastal ground cover, so not the foliage folder, but the main folder here. And we've got two different materials here. We've got our regular material and then we have the billboard material. And ignore the billboard material for now. We're gonna talk about that next episode. But if you go into this first material, so this is our child material that's using the standard Megascans MMS foliage material. And there's a setting, there's a parameter right above it, 07 wind. And if you check that, enable grass wind, we're gonna make it true. And then we get four settings the intensity, the height, the speed, and the additional world position offset. So WPO, that's what that stands for, world position offset. And this is the way that wind works in Unreal Engine for foliage. So it's not actually changing the geography. It's not actually changing where that object is at any given point in time. It's only providing the illusion from a visual standpoint. So if you have collision enabled, for example, for a branch of a tree and it's waving, it's not gonna affect the collision in any way. So let's actually take a look at this in real time and see if we can adjust the wind to make it look good. And we can see our foliage there waving in the wind, but it looks kind of like we're in a dream or a hallucinogenic trip. So I'm gonna change the settings of this just a little bit. So if we check the wind intensity, wind height, wind speed, then we can adjust all of those. And in general, the wind height needs to be adjusted based on the height of the foliage. So really short foliage could be something like 0.5. This is actually a little bit taller, so I'm gonna make this a little bit higher here. So let's set it to about one. And you see setting the height to a higher value actually increases the speed at which it moves. So we're gonna to need to adjust the intensity and the speed as well but it's starting to look a little bit more realistic in its movement, right? So I'm gonna set it even higher here to two. Yeah, so now we see it moving much more at the top of the foliage versus the bottom of the foliage. It's starting to look more realistic. Let's lower our intensity down a bit. And let's also lower the speed down to about half of what it is. Yeah, so now we're talking. Now this is starting to look a little bit more realistic. I think I'm gonna lower the settings even more. So wind intensity down to 0.03 and wind speed down to 0.2. Because we just want to provide the illusion of wind, right? It doesn't matter that it's not moving very fast. And that's what I typically find, is if you set your wind settings to go, it starts looking not very realistic. But if you set it to be just a very gentle, casual wind, it provides that ambiance, that general feel that, yeah, this is realistic, this is a real scene. So here are the settings I ultimately ended up going with for our Nordic Coastal ground cover here. Just a very gentle breeze, but it looks fairly realistic unless I really study that foliage. So that concludes our episode for today. And in our next episode, we're gonna be painting some really dense foliage assets along our water quadrant, just like you see here. And we're gonna start the episode really by making every rookie mistake in the book. And then the rest of the episode, I'm gonna show you every trick I know of to actually improve the performance of foliage while keeping the look and feel really the quality of your game. So I hope to see you there.